Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this morning. My name is Ben Coyle. Uh, me and the rest of the training group here at RAB Lighting have a topic for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about residential and commercial lighting and how they compare and how they are different from each other. Uh, Bob, who are you? We are Bob Henderson. Uh, so today is a rainy day in Raleigh, North Carolina. We do not have any snow. Uh, so thank you for all those who are tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoy the session. Paul? Hey, Colleen McLaughlin. Um, today is the last Monday of January. So that means it is our last opportunity to enter the January $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. So if you would like to enter, today's code word is HOME, H-O-M-E. Make sure when you get your survey after today's presentation, you fill it out and put that code word in as one entry into the monthly drawing. So we will be announcing the drawing tomorrow. Um, I'll give you 24 hours to fill out the survey, but we will be drawing it tomorrow. So there's not a lag time, you will be notified. Um, also, if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, type them into the question box and I will get back to you at the end with those. Excellent, thank you very much. So we're gonna jump right in, uh, do our takeaways like we normally do. Uh, so the top three takeaways that we have for you today is uh, there are some similarities and differences between residential and commercial lighting. Before I actually move on to the next takeaway, I do want to point out that if you want to um, create enough of a similarity, you can probably use any product in any market segment. Uh, what we're doing today is we're going to be talking about general goals, like goals of what the type of goals that you would think in terms of residential and commercial, what products typically are in the residential world and commercial world. We also, uh, there are some products that kind of live in the gray area or in the, the middle ground and live in both sets. We'll be talking about those too. Uh, the second takeaway that we have for you is we will identify the things you need to think about, which will guide you to the correct product. And then the last one has to do with what I was just mentioning in terms of, we do have residential products, products that are strong in the residential world. We have other products that are really strong in the commercial world. And then we have st certain products that work equally well in both markets and we'll point those out to you. So we just recently uh, developed a vertical marketing brochure. We've had a vertical marketing brochure on multifamily uh, facilities. Uh, but this one right here that we see is specifically focused on single family homes. So you can actually go onto rablighting.com underneath the news sections and you will be able to download the PDF of this. This is not quite on Rab Drive yet, but it will be very, very soon. So you can access the single family home uh, brochure on our website, rablighting.com. Now, when we uh, look at the goals and we look at the, the differences between residential and commercial lighting, those of you who attended Bob and my webinar uh, in December, we talked about some goals from a residential standpoint. And those of you who have been watching uh, these uh, Lunch and Learn webinars that we've been doing since uh, April of last year, we've been kind of... Uh, mingling in goals of commercial lighting. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm gonna stack up these different ones. And uh, again, realize that on the left here, we say residential lighting supports safety, security, and aesthetics. Uh, aesthetics has a great deal of involvement with residential lighting. On the commercial side, we, we are concerned about safety, security, but also navigation, being able to get from point A to point B. Now you might say, well, navigation is important in residential and aesthetics is important in commercial. You're 100% correct. They, they are something that can be uh, in both categories. But again, we're talking about generalized goals. Um, from a residential standpoint, uh, residential lighting is affected by the color of the walls inside the space, uh, the shape of the space, and also the textures. But when we think about a commercial world, we're thinking more along the terms of activity levels. Um, is it front of house? Is it back of house? Do you have a lot of people interacting or is it a uh, low activity level in that space? What type of product you're gonna use or the goal that you have will greatly affect the how often the space is used. Lighting zones, that has to do with Times Square versus Zions National Park. Uh, you'll have different goals, different products based upon how much ambient lighting is allowed in that space. And from a commercial standpoint, rebates um, are uh, used a whole lot more as are really strong in the commercial world. 
Residential lighting uh, promotes comfort, warmth, and invitation. Whereas when we think of commercial lighting, we think along the lines of, we want people to be productive. We want to be able to facilitate communication between people and also create a, a, a condition of visual comfort uh, between the lighting, between the computers, between all the different surfaces, making sure that we have a good visual comfort. Uh, the goals for residential lighting is a friendly, functional, and flexible. Uh, whereas when we think of commercial lighting, we're thinking more in terms of quantity and quality. I wanted to find another keyword, but I couldn't find a triple uh, keyword. If somebody comes up with a good one for the commercial there, I would love to have three Qs like I have three Fs for the residential. Now, when we kind of building upon these goals, when we think about what's happening due to COVID and how that is changing our work life, a lot of people are working from home. I've been working from home for uh, almost the past year. And when we think of working from home, you uh, think about taking your space that you have and repairing it, maybe repurposing it. Um, fortunately for myself, I have a spot here in the basement that I had before COVID hit. Um, so I didn't have to crawl, uh, carve out a little niche in my house so that I can create a little work environment for me here at home. Uh, there might be some renovation going on or maybe even some additions. Um, since um, March, when all this happened, if I were to walk outside my front door and look at the 10 homes that I can see um, out from my, my front porch, of those 10 homes, four of them have done some type of uh, major remodeling since uh, COVID hit. One of them, uh, major inside and outside, two of them, uh, major outside renovation, and one, uh, the house doesn't even look the same. It's uh, a major addition, major uh, addition to the house. And we're gonna be talking more, Bob and myself are gonna be talking more about this concept of taking your home and making it more work friendly in a couple of webinars that we're gonna be doing next month and the month after. Now on the other end, our commercial world life is changing also. Uh, with the fact that people are working from home and, and businesses are finding that uh, certain people can work from home perfectly fine. So there's a lot of downsizing going on with uh, facility managers having to reinvent their space, maybe taking it from a office type of space and changing it to be something different. Now, when all these things are happening, when we're doing uh, modifications inside of our home, or our companies are doing modifications inside our places of work, uh, they're gonna need new lighting. So as we make this shift and as we make this change, we need to be on top of what the products will work for a commercial standpoint and what products will work from a residential standpoint, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this webinar. And the last one here, um, I think we all know that the new construction has been slowing significantly. Uh, there is still new construction going on, but the way that businesses are doing uh, their office spaces have definitely changed uh, dramatically, and we can capitalize on that with offering the correct solutions. So what I want to do is I'm going to start off with a couple of different spaces, and uh, the way that I was thinking as I was going down the, this presentation, uh, if you have a driveway, what's the, the corresponding space uh, in a commercial world? Well, it would be a loading dock, right? So you have a vehicle that drives down the driveway into somebody's home, or you have a big vehicle driving up to a loading dock uh, to a resident, or sorry, commercial structure. <clears throat> so what kind of products might we use uh, in a commercial driveway or in a loading dock? Uh, the two that I have here from a residential standpoint, we have the SMS Leslie. So this Leslie is two 13 watt heads with a occupancy sensor right there in the center. Uh, this SMS Leslie uh, fits into the economy family. It has a five year limited warranty. Uh, we have this SMS Bullet, which uh, we've been offering for before I started, I've been here uh, close to five years, has a 10 year full warranty with this. Uh, so this uh, has 13 watt heads. These two products that we see here, um, th those are the only wattages that you have. You have the 13 watt Leslie, two heads, so 26 watts, or the 12 watt bullets uh, for 24 watts uh, combined total. Now in a commercial world, 
13 or sorry, 26 and 24 watts is definitely not going to be enough to illuminate your loading dock. So we have something like the PIP and the PIP XL, three different sizes, six different wattages in the PIP family fits into that economy limited warranty. You do have knuckle mounts, you do have slip fitters and a trunnion mount. The two smaller ones are only available with the knuckle mount. Uh, the larger one is available with the slip with only the slip fitter or the trunnion mount. When we go to the FF family of products, uh, this one has four different sizes, eight different wattages, three different beam distributions, also three different mounting uh, options. The, the one on the bottom right there, the FF LED 18, that one is only available with the knuckle mount. The next one up, that next one up is 26 through 80 watt. Uh, that one is available with both the knuckle mount, the slip fitter, and the trunnion mount um, with uh, three different beam distributions. So more of a, a localized light if you're trying to light from a little bit farther away and you need to get light onto that loading dock or the nice wide distribution uh, uh, options there. So we have a 120 watt version, then a 180 and a 230 in the FFLED. So here we have kind of two products that really separate themselves well into their commercial world and their residential world. Now, one thing that might happen, um, I do have a friend that has a, a, a house near the beach. He has a neighbor that uses uh, the FFLED 18 on his home. So there is a little bit of crossover. That FFLED 18 um, I have seen used in some residential applications. So uh, not 100%, but this is basically what you're going to see from a commercial uh, loading dock and a commercial driveway. Uh, the next two spaces I have for you is your residential yard and then the residential landscape. Uh, so uh, the, the greenery, the bushes, the trees, uh, the grass around a commercial space. So uh, products that really fit into the residential world easy is the Fern. This is a low voltage product, six watts. The, the Pagoda has three different versions. That floodlight can actually become spotlight by taking the little collet off of it. And then you have this deck light, five year full warranty, really sits nice well inside the residential world. On the opposite end, over here on the bottom right, we have our H series. So this is your HB, which is the flood, HS, which is your spot, and then the HN, which is uh, the narrow spot. Uh, we can see here it's in four different colors. We have three different wattages, 13, 18, and 26 watt versions. Uh, so if you want to light um, a little bush or a big bush, a small tree or a big tree, all have the are in the same size. So you have a nice unified look, but yet you can change the beam pattern. You can also change the wattage of how much light output that you get so that you can illuminate a lot of different things. Uh, but this product is not going to be used um, on somebody's residence. Residence is going to use something like this. So our LF or landscape flood has a four uh, watt low voltage version, which again, you, you um, don't have to run conduit, uh, all that stuff. Uh, nice low voltage solution uh, for your residential type customer. And then we have over here the X34. The X34 is a nice floodlight that you can use in the landscape. Uh, the small um, X34, the 1600 lumen, all the way up to nice, big, large uh, lumens. Now, the other day I was playing chess with my son and I was trying to figure out a way in this presentation to kind of like take these things and move them around because what we have going on here is I can take this, this LF and I can put this LF up here and then I can take my um, X34 and I could have easily done this with the exception of the X34, you're not gonna be using these two big wattages from a residential standpoint, so you can't have to ignore those two big ones. Uh, but those smaller uh, X34s, 100% good to use in a residential type application. Now the LFs, we have a five watt version, then we have an eight watt version, nice two inch opening on this guy. Perfectly great type of a product to use in a commercial space. So here we have these two that I kind of interchange that kind of live in both worlds, depending upon which version that you have, whether it's the low voltage that you would probably have in the residential. Um, the X34 large watt inch ones would be over there in the commercial space. Now, the next uh, product that I have for you happens to be uh, garages. So your residential garage is very, very different than your parking garage. 
So starting off with the two parking garage fixtures that will probably never ever go inside of your garage unless uh, you're uh, maybe a sales rep for uh, Rab and have an old Porto that you don't know what to do with and you put it in your garage. That's the only reason why a Porto with the two sizes there um, or the Ive Park down there with one size, four different light distributions. What's great about the Ive Park is you have um, a wide distribution, you have a concentrated distribution, those are two, and then you have those same two distributions with a little bit of uplight. That's how you get the four from a commercial standpoint. Now, in a residential garage, you would use something like the Gus Jr. The Gus Jr. has a prismatic lens, um, it has two strips of light, so it makes it look like that fluorescent solution that we've seen so many uh, times before, a fluorescent strip. Uh, the Gus Jr. is a great uh, solution for that. And then the last one that I have here, uh, like my garage, my garage door opener has a medium screw base socket. We've recently come out with a contractor six pack. Uh, so a 60 watt equivalent and 100 watt equivalent and a nice six pack, great product from a residential standpoint, that contractor uh, type, uh, uh, yeah. So one of the things that when, when we look here at this scenario, Obviously, the Porto and the Ive Park are not going to move over to the other side, but I might do something like this, where I take my, um, I'm going to take my Ive Park, and I'm going to move it down a little bit. Oh, this didn't do it. I apologize. Um, there we go. Sorry. Uh, where we would have the Ive Park. Sorry, we would have the Gus Jr. sitting over there in the commercial space. Now that Gus Jr. isn't gonna sit in the space where it has the parking spaces or the entryway to the parking garage, that Gus Jr. is gonna be used in the support space. The electrical room, the storage room, the cleaning room, the, the, the back space would be a perfect application for that Gus Jr. So that Gus Jr. kind of realms or uh, shifts between that residential world over to the commercial world. All right. The net last one that I have before I turn you over to Bob happens to be uh, when we talk about kitchens, we have a residential kitchen and then we have your commercial kitchen. Now these guys are going to have very different products sitting in them. Uh, the commercial, or sorry, the residential kitchen is going to have something like the Nook FA. We just recently uh, changed this product, updated it, uh, lowered the price, made it field adjustable in terms of light output and also field adjustable from a color temperature standpoint. We have something like maybe the Gus in a smaller kitchen uh, where you want some nice good vertical light. The Gus has a, a lens that is fully luminous on the bottom and the sides, no fluorescent look to them. Uh, you can definitely use a Gus in uh, the standard Gus in a smaller kitchen. In a commercial space uh, over those areas where you're preparing food, you might need a NSF certified product like the Shark um, and in the other areas inside of a large commercial kitchen, uh, you would probably use something like the Easy Pan would be a good solution for that area. So with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to Bob, and he is going to continue on with this comparison of different space types. Okay. Thank you, Ben. So as we move forward here, uh, as Ben said, we've been talking a lot about areas that could be in the gray area. So let's take a look at this picture right here. And uh, this could be at your home. So you've got a family, maybe at the kitchen table. Uh, that little young man is uh, kind of showing off a little bit, making some uh, some fun for the family, so forth. Uh, it's definitely a res residential setting in the dining area. So if we if we start, <clears throat> let's take a look at this. All right. So residential dining, we want to be relaxed. Uh, have it, the time is flexible for a family meal, uh, have open conversation, and we have friends and family usually there. But over on the commercial side, it's quite different. So you think about this, you're uh, maybe having a break from, from your work time for, for lunch. Time is usually limited. Uh, you want to, today, of course, we are observing social distancing. And we have generally <clears throat> talk about work. Sometimes we don't, but many times we do talk about work. <clears throat> so as we move into this residential dining, let's look at this uh, two-inch economy downlight. So it serves both in the residential 
but it also can serve in light commercial. It's about a 40 degree beam spread, which means you have a coverage of light, but it's not too wide. 90 CRI for good color. 650, 700 lumens is about normal for this type of light. Uh, it's IC rated, so perfect for the home to lay insulation over. And you may use this with layers of light in a dining room, depending on whether it's the kitchen or the, or the dining room. But it's going to give you a, a nice, kind of like a narrow flood pattern. Uh, or you could use a two inch down light. Now, notice this one, uh, it could be residential or commercial. Uh, it comes in 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and 40 degrees. So even though you have a more narrow beam spread, it's not deep recessed like the first one that we looked at with the economy version. So uh, when we look up at the ceiling, we're going to be able to see the, the light, but it, it's going to vary depending on is it a narrow spot, a spot, or more of a floodlight. Lumens are, are similar, a little bit more, 750 lumens. Uh, CRI here is, is 80. Okay. Now, then we go to our deep regrets. Now, this one has more lumens and would be more of a high end residential where you want more drama. Uh, same beam spreads uh, and available in 80 or 90 CRI. And you're looking for glare control. So, this is definitely a, a distribution of this light is cut off, it's regressed up into the ceiling. And so you would definitely use this with some other layers of light in the room. Otherwise, you're going to have somewhat of a cave effect. But all of these three give you a different choices. Now, that's, that's kind of the residential side. Over on the commercial side, we could use, especially if it's an existing application, uh, we could use the four-inch retrofit downlight in dining. And uh, it's commercial as well as residential, not just one. About 100 degrees, so you have a nice wide beam spread of light, and it's up to 800 lumens, so we're increasing our lumens a little bit. The aperture has gone to four inches, and it has triac dimming. Okay, but and so that's triac dimming instead of zero to 10. And we have the four inch edge lit, lit wafer. Now we're up to 120 degrees. Now, could this go in a home? Yes, it could still go in a home, but this is focused a little bit. You, the, the driver is going to be remote, uh, so you, it's canless. And you're also, now, but look at the lumens. The lumens are a little bit less, 550 lumens. So that needs to be taken into consideration if it's commercial. <clears throat> also try dimming. And then when we have higher level of light or maybe a higher ceiling, we look at the six inch performance down light. Canless, 90 degrees. So it's wide, but not not as wide as some. So it is considered a floodlight, and uh, it comes in two different packages of lumens, two different wattages, 12 and 18 watts, and it has zero to 10 dimming. So kind of in general, uh, not if you have triac dimming, that's kind of been in the past associated with residential, like commercial, uh, and zero to 10 is more on the commercial side. There's certainly exceptions to that. All right, so as we move forward, uh, now let's move into this application here. And what do we see here? We see a hallways. So over the residential hallway, we want it to be safe and comfortable, easy wayfinding. And this is a, uh, look like a hotel corridor. So it's functional. Uh, you want some drama there. Uh, you still want to be able to see, but it has a kind of a non-residential feel to it. So some of the applications for residential hallways is the 4-inch downlight, which we've already discussed. Uh, our 4 inch edge lit wafer, again, that we've, we've, we've discussed this one as well. <clears throat> and then we have the, a new fixture, the half sconce. So you think about this more for um, commercial, but it also could be residential. In fact, I have one in my uh, stairwell going upstairs, and it just does a great job because it's Vertical light, uh, very uh, soft, uh, and uh, it's up light and down light. Notice also that it mentions here multiple decorative options. So if you have the plain one, that's going to be more or less expensive. That's what I have. That's more suited for residential. As you get into the upper, uh, more decorative layers, 
uh, then the, the price is going to increase a little bit and it's going to fit it more into the commercial area. We have two wattages here. So 1,000 watts or 1,000 lumens is more the, the, the residential uh, size. And but when you but and for the standard diffuse lens, but when you get into these decorative uh, lenses, they're more, more opaque, more diffuse. So you're going to need to have the higher lumen packages. Over on commercial side, we Ben described the Gus Jr. That's the one where you know replaces the fluorescent, and you can still see see those like fluorescent tube lying, uh, and that could be uh, easily for commercial some com many commercial hallways or back of the house or whatever. But the Gus is more diffused, as Ben mentioned. Very comfortable. Uh, you want a little bit more decor, uh, not not just a little bit more upscale. And then also just the lamps. You want to keep the same, uh, lower your cost, uh, maintain the same look, then the lamps is, is an option. Now, moving here into our office. So if we take over here to the left here, this may be what many of you are working in. So this is a, a young lady that's working, look like at her dining room or kitchen table. And uh, she has a, a work atmosphere currently. You need good visibility, needs to be comfortable. And the last one is a question mark, right? So minimize interference. She's fine right now, but who knows? You may have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And so that's a question mark that we all have been dealing with since in our COVID period. But this is a residential office where a, a portion of the room is made up uh, with an office, This, in this case, in the kitchen. Over on the other side, though, is commercial. So you have this business feel, interaction with peers, needs to be efficient, but still needs to be relaxed. So both of these apply. So some of the products. Let's take a look at the residential office. Uh, this is where I'm sitting right now. So what did I do to make my office uh, which is a converted bedroom, look like this. I put in two RAB lamps, 90 CRI with an R9 of over 50 into my mushroom lamps up here above me, and it did the trick. Uh, I have a task light, which I use occasionally, but makes the colors pop and gives you good visibility. Just And I also have this on a dimmer. So this is residential for a dedicated space. However, there also could be linear tubes. Again, we have A, A slash B, B and C to choose from that we've talked about in previous webinars. The Gus Jr., again, we've already discussed that one. That could be a residential office. Or over on the commercial side, here's our six inch performance downlight that we've discussed. Here's our Gus that we've already discussed, service mount or could be also chain mount as well as flat panels. So the commercial flat panel, uh, our easy pan, it uh, goes in a grid ceiling. You have low glare associated with that and uh, very cost effective and it's easy to install. So reviewing our takeaways that Ben mentioned, there are similarities and differences between residential and commercial lighting. Uh, we have identified the, the, uh, the things that uh, talk about regarding the correct product for the right space. And then uh, this thing about it could be only residential, it could be a gray where it kind of goes back and forth, uh, and then it, it could be only commercial. So depending on the particular influencing factor that you have, you can select the right product. So this uh, concludes our 30-minute segment, uh, really, of our session today. But we do have some additional